Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray, pray for, for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today is Gaudete Sunday. This is a Sunday of joyful expectation a Sunday of hope because we know that the Lord is near, that He is bringing with Him goodness, righteousness, justice, and peace. And so in this celebration of the Eucharist, let us be joyful in hope as we expect the coming of the goodness of our Savior to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty, so Almighty God, God and to, and to you, you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, 
through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please all be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you as one sings at festivals. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the great and holy one of Israel. God indeed is my Savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. With joy, you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. Cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the Great and Holy One of Israel. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim His name. Among the nations, make known His deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. Cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the holy one of Israel. Cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the great and holy one of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, 
Make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The crowds asked John the Baptist, What should we do? He said to them in reply, Whoever has two cloaks should share with the person who has none, and whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what should we do? He answered them, Stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, And what is it that we should do? He told them, Do not practice extortion. Do not falsely accuse anyone. And be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways, he preached good news to the people. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please all be seated. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. This morning is truly a morning filled with joy, especially as we gather together to celebrate the Eucharist, to break and share the Word among us, to break the bread and share the body of Christ together. Truly, my dear brothers and sisters, whenever there is sharing, whenever we come together, there is joy. Sana po ngayong umaga, ay masaya kayong nagkakatipon tayo dito sa simbahan. Nagtitipon at nagbibigay 
ng bawat isa ng sarili nagbabahagi ng salita ng Diyos at binabahagi din natin mamaya ang tinapay, ang katawan ni Kristo para pagsaluhan ng lahat. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, our readings are filled with one common message. And this message is this. The Lord is coming. He is coming. God will come. He will come. He is near. He is in our midst. The Lord is near. We are expecting Him. Kung titingnan ho natin ang ating mga pagbasa ngayong linggo na ito, ay parang iisa ang mensahe. At ito ang mensahe. Darating ang Diyos. Malapit na siya. Parating na ang Panginoon. And my dear brothers and sisters, when the Word of God speaks this to us, that He is near, it is not a threat. It is not a warning. In fact, it is a joyful message. Kapag sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos na, ayan na, malapit na siyang dumating. Paparating na ang Diyos. Hindi ito pagbabanta sa atin. Kundi isa itong masaya, masayang balita. Mabuting balita. In our first reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah, we see that the people of Israel received this news with joy. Noong narinig nila ang balita ni propeta Zephaniah, ay naglulundag sila sa tuwa. Napakanta sila sa saya sapagkat sabi ng propeta, ang Panginoon ay darating na. It is like music to their ears when they heard that the Lord is near, the Lord is coming. Oh, what a beautiful sound! to hear in our ears parang musika sa kanilang pandinig na marinig nilang sinasabi ng propeta, parating na siya, darating ang Diyos. That is why today, Gaudete Sunday, we wear the color rose. Kulay rosas ang suot natin sa liturhiya. Kung mapapansin po ninyo, ang ikatlong kandila na sinindihan natin sa Advent Reef ay kulay rosas. Ang suot ng pari sa lahat ng simbahan ngayong araw na ito, sa buong Pilipinas at sa buong mundo, kulay rosas. Bakit? This is the color of joy. This is the color of hope. We are joyful because we hear the news that the Lord is near. We are joyful because we hear the news that the Lord is coming. Patunay po ang kulay na ito na kapag narinig nating mga Kristiyano na paparating na ang Diyos, masaya na tayo, nagsasaya tayo. Pero meron din kong mga hindi nagsasaya kapag sinabing malapit na at darating na ang Diyos. 
Alam niyo kung sino yung mga hindi masaya kapag sinabing parating na ang Diyos? Yung may tinatago. Yung may tinatagong ginagawang masama. Yan ang natatakot. People who are hiding something, they are afraid when they hear the news that the Lord is near. For them, the words, He will come, is a threat and is not a good news. Kung masaya tayo na nagsasabi, ah, parating na ang Diyos, paparating na si Jesus, yung mga gumagawa ng masama, ang tono sa kanila ay, halaka, paparating na ang Diyos. No? Napansin niyo magkaiba. Sa unang pagbasa, parang musika sa pandinig nila, paparating na ang Diyos. Napakakanta sila. Napapasayaw sila sa saya. Pero kapag may tinatago ka, nag-iiba ang tono. Paparating na ang Diyos. Hindi ba totoo yan? Kapag may ginawa kang kalokohan at sinabing, ah, paparating na, magtatago ka na. Halimbawa, sinabi ng nanay mo, aalis ako. At kapag uwi ko, gusto ko na linis mo na ang bahay. E maghapon, naglaro ka lang ng Mobile Legends. Naku, ayan na. Ano? At narinig mo na, bumubusina na, at sumigaw na ang kapatid mo, andyan na, dumating na si mama. Naku, nagtatago ka na. Itatago mo na lahat ng mga hindi mo pa nalinis. Kaya yung salita na paparating na, kapag may tinatago ka, hindi ka masaya na marinig yung salitang yun. If you are doing something bad, and if you are hiding it, when you hear the words, He is coming, that is not good news for you. It is a warning for you. Halimbawa, may asawa ka, at may tinatago ka pang isa mong asawa na nakatago. Anong ginagawa mo? Ipagkakalat mo ba? Hindi. Tinatago mo yan. At kapag sinabi na sa'yo, parating na ang asawa mo, nako, itatago mo na yung pangalawa mo. At marami pa nga sa atin, gumagawa ng fake news para itago ang kalokohan. No? Hindi na bago ang fake news. Matagal nang ginagawa yan minsan ng mga, ano, no? may mga number two. No? Kaya minsan nag-excuse. No? Magpapaalam sa asawa, lalabas lang kami ng mga kaibigan ko. Lalabas lang kami, magbabasketball lang kami ng mga kaibigan ko. Naku, fake news pala. Itinatago pala ang tunay na pupuntahan. These are the people who are afraid of the word, He is coming. That is why in our gospel reading today, the message of John the Baptist to his disciples is to change their lives, to put their hearts into conversion, magbago na kayo. Ayusin na natin ang buhay natin para pag dumating ang Diyos, hindi tayo threatened, kundi masaya tayo. John the Baptist teaches his disciples to change their lives, change their ways, so that when we hear that the Lord is coming, we are not threatened. In fact, we should be joyful. 
John the Baptist has told his disciples, if you have extra clothes, share it. If you have extra food, share it. He was talking to the tax collectors, stop collecting what is pres more than what is prescribed by the law. Sabi niya sa mga nangongolekta ng buwis, huwag gagawa ng corruption. Kung ano lang ang dapat mong kunin, yun lang. Walang pasobra, walang ibubulsa. The soldiers also approached John the Baptist. John the Baptist told them, do not practice extortion. Huwag kayong mangingikil, kukuha ng pera para magkaroon ng pabor. Do not falsely accuse anyone. Huwag daw gagawa ng fake news. Huwag mag-aakusa ng kapwa, lalo na kung ito'y kasinungalingan. Tama ang mensahe ni San Juan Bautista. Baguhin ang sarili. Nang sa gayon, hindi ka tago ng tago. Kundi kapag narinig natin parating ang Diyos, hindi tayo magtatago, kundi tayo ay magsasaya. For those who are hiding something from God, the words, He will come, will always be a threat. But for those who do and support goodness, righteousness, justice, the words, He is near, will always be a message of joy. Yung mga may tinatago, takot at galit sa Diyos. Pero ang mga may malinis na gawain at malinis na puso at malinis na hangarin, masaya sa pagdating ng Diyos. My dear brothers and sisters, let us close with our second reading today from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. St. Paul reminds us, if you have kindness in your heart, if you have prayer and thanksgiving in your heart, then you will not be anxious, but you will have peace, and you will always rejoice when we say that the Lord is coming. Kapag tayo ay may busilak na kalooban, kapag wala tayong tinatago, kapag tayo ay may kabutihan, pagdarasal, pagpapasalamat sa ating mga damdamin, nako, hindi ka na kahit kailan kailangang magtago, tago ng tago, kundi kapag dumating ang Diyos, tunay ngang masaya ka. Today is the feast day also of Our Lady of Guadalupe, the celestial patroness of the Philippines. When she appeared to Saint Juan Diego, San Juan Diego was not afraid of her. And he said, when Mary was calling me, it was really a sweet sounding music to my ears because the message of Guadalupe is always a joyful message for those who have clean and pure hearts. In this celebration of the Mass, let the words of God become today a sweet-sounding and joyful message. Let us return to the Lord. Let us change our hearts and our lives so that the Word of God may always be a joyful message to all of us. Amen.
Please all stand. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the, the third, third day, day he rose again, again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The coming of the Lord is near. We have been encouraged to ask for anything we need with prayer and thanksgiving. Therefore, let us pray to the Father, and for every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Pope, and all the pastors of our church, that they may guide us with sound doctrine. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who teach the Catholic faith, that they may make Christ's words and deeds known to the people with accuracy and enthusiasm. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live in poverty, that they may know the comforting message of the word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people in our community, that they may be happy, always happy in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, that they may come to eternal life with Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions and for all the intentions offered in this Mass. Most loving Father, hear the prayers of your people, guide the world in true peace, and let us serve you in joy and faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please all be seated.
all stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our goods and the goods of all His Holy Church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he might find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please all kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please all stand. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Peace all kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few important announcements. This coming uh, Wednesday, December 15, we will already be beginning the celebration of our Simbang Gabi. Dito po sa Manila Cathedral, ang atin pong schedule ng mga Simbang Gabi, sa gabi po ay alas 8 ng gabi, 8 p.m. Sa madaling araw po ay alas 4.30 ng umaga, 4.30 a.m. Kaya po paghandaan na natin ang ating mga pagdiriwang ng simbang gabi, siyam na araw na tayo ay magnonobena sa karangalan ng ating mahal na ina upang tayo ay tunay na magsaya at manabik sa pagdating ng ating Panginoong Jesus. We pray that you will participate in these nine days of Simbang Gabi. For those who are homebound, those who are sick, and those who cannot go out of the house, our Simbang Gabi Masses will continue to be broadcasted online. Again, our schedule is at 8 p.m. in the evening and 4.30 a.m. in the morning. Pagdating naman po ng Christmas Eve, December 24, our Christmas Eve Mass, which will be presided by our beloved Archbishop Jose Cardinal Advincula, the Christmas Eve Mass will be at 8 p.m. here in the Manila Cathedral. Our Christmas Day Masses on December 25 will be like our uh, fiesta schedule at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 4 p.m., and 6 p.m. All of these details and schedules will be posted on our social media pages. So don't forget to follow our social media pages of the Manila Cathedral so that you may be updated always of our Christmas schedule, Simbang Gabi schedule here in the Cathedral. Again, our deep thanks and gratitude for all of you who have participated in our joyful Eucharist this morning. Gaudete Sunday. We also thank those who have uh, come here to celebrate Mass with us. Pati kayo pong mga nasa labas diyan, maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikiisa at matyagang uh, pagsisimba. No? Nakatayo po kayo diyan sa labas. Salamat po sa inyo. Maraming salamat po sa mga sumusubaybay sa atin online. For those who are watching us online in this celebration in different parts of the world, we thank you for your continued support and love for the Manila Cathedral. And we thank you also for continuously sharing the Word of God through our social media pages. Let us now all stand and receive the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing now and forever. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity now and forever. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when He comes again in majesty 
forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Savior.